record this. Okay. Yeah. So, so basically the best thing that the leadership training gave to me was that it brought all of this stuff that I like, like I said, that I like instinctively just like in, kind of followed my instincts and did with my kids. It brought mm-hmm. it all from that level of instinct and unconscious into my level of like conscious awareness so that I, so that, because I, as I was learning all these skill sets, I was like, no, 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 I know how to do this. I've been doing this with like my family for forever. Yeah. Right. And so it brought it from that, just like that instinctive, I'm moving with like sort of the spirits that are, that are, that are being like, I, that I need to do right now to that level of consciousness. And what that gave me was that a, it gave me the confidence in myself because I was like, Oh, I already have all of these skill sets. Like I've already developed all of these skill sets inside of myself. I know how to do all of this. So it gave me the confidence in myself. And then it gave me a conscious awareness of it so that I could choose when I needed to use each skill in the situation. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because with moms, like, we just instinctively do it with our kids because that's like what the kids need. Oh, speaking of which, I'm like, oh, baby, I'm sorry. Did I wake them up? No, they're watching TV. Oh, oh no. Well, I know this is what happens. This is what happens when we're all stuck in the house together. <laughs> <laughs> so base, so here's, here's a good example. With kids, like we, we do what's needed with the kids and um, we don't have to be as subtle about it. You know what I mean? We don't have to be as like, kind of, um, we don't have to be as subtle about it because we can just be like, go to your rooms. And they will, cause you know, at that point that they need like to take some time by themselves. Like, you know, we, we are very good at, at intuitively seeing what's needed in the situation okay so that's like a huge skill set that moms have and then but with kids we can just be like you need to go to your room and go like take some time by yourself because that's what you yes, yes, need. Yes. and they have they kind of have to follow us like they kind of have uh, kind of because they're small yeah they, they, they do what we say because we're their moms right exactly so the deal is when we go out into society and start using those leadership skills that we developed as a mom When we go and do it with adults, you have to do it much more subtly. So we can see that clearly this group of adults just needs to go and take some time by themselves. Like they just do, that's what's needed in the situation. And we, at this point, we can't yet say, y'all just go to your rooms, go to your rooms, that's what you need, right? Time. Yeah. (laughs) Time out. Everyone taking a time out right now, right? And so we can't do that because they're adults as well. And so it's like, okay, so how can we how can we use leadership skills to do it in a way that's gonna help them get to this point? We all see that communicate to adults, so we're communicating to them. Yes. Our children. Yes. Yes. It's like, it's literally, it's, so what are the skill sets that we can use in order to facilitate what we are, we know we need to get there, you know, what are the actual leadership skill sets and, and bringing them to that conscious awareness point so that we can be like, okay, I'm going to choose this one in this situation because I like championing. Championing is one that I think is really I do I think it's I think it's something that that I do a lot so championing is when you're like I don't think you know how amazing you are even at the beginning of this conversation and I think that and this is something that actually I think when we were kind of talking about this I think women need to do this with each other so much more because why why because we need to call forth the mom we need to call forth that energy in order to help the world. Why? Because the world kind of needs moms right now to help teach them how to get along as a world family. That's something that moms do really well, you know? And so, yeah, so it's like, okay, so I see this, my instinct, my gut is telling me, oh, this is where the world needs to go. How do I do that? How do I do that with other adults? Because I can't just go to all the other moms in the world and be like, y'all, 
get out there and start talking your talk, you know, because it just doesn't work. <laughs> I've tried. It doesn't work. Yeah. So like a skill set that we can use is championing of like, I do not think that you know how amazing you are. Let me tell you what your impact is, the ways that you have helped me in my life to grow. Like this is a skill that you have, like you, Ida, your, your non-judgment and your ability to discern your stuff inside of yourself. It's a huge skill that you have. And I don't think you even know that about yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, we women, we got to start being like, that's right. That's right. That's what I do. <laughs> no. But so that's what I mean. It's like these, we all, we know, we moms, especially, we know how to do all this stuff. It's just bringing it to that level of conscious awareness and, and choosing what's needed in the situation. Yeah. And, and age, you know, like bringing that conscious awareness and Yes. Trying to say, who are you talking to? Are you talking to, you know, like different age groups too? Because there's a lot of different groups of adults. <laughs> yes. It's so, that's so true. So something that was super. Um, Generations. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So my, my mom used to always say something to me, which I thought was super helpful, which was, if you want me to treat you like an adult, you need to act like an adult. And I think that's so helpful. And then another parenting book that I read um, that was about teenagers, like when you get to the teen years, kind of how to deal with that stuff, because they're starting to move into that adult space of like, okay, it needs to be more subtle and more like us creating it together instead of me as a mom, just creating it for you. You know what I mean? Like co-creation, listening to my kids, understanding that I probably can grow in this experience as well, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's like, when we interact with adults, it's that same thing, because there are some adults that can meet us at that level where we're like, Oh, okay, let's co-create something really cool. Yeah, we just, we just click. Yeah, yes, exactly. And then there are some where it's like, no, you just need to listen to what I have to say because you're just not quite there yet, you know? And so um, it's from, so this was like a parenting guy, that, a book that I read about this, which was, he was like, I would say to my kids, am I talking to the three-year-old or am I talking to the 14-year-old right now? I don't care. It's fine. Just tell me which one you're at and then I'll respond appropriately to that. And I think that that is a very helpful place to be of like, of thinking about that too as a skill set of, paying attention to the people that are around you and being like, are you acting like you're three or are you acting like more like an adult in this situation? Yeah. Okay. That's going to help me manage my responses then. Well, cool. then that makes the person think too, like the child, like, okay, you know, how old am I and how old should I, you know, how am I acting? Yeah. There's a really cool book called Mutant Message Down Under that I was given. You would love it. It's so good. Mutant Message Down Under. It's so good. It was given to me by um, the Somali lady that lives here who is like one of my sisters. She's one of my soul sisters. Um, and uh, one of the things, it it's, uh, talks about some, an aboriginal tribe and this woman's experience with them. So it's really, really, really mm -hmm. beautiful book. Like, seriously. like an outsider's experience with the Aboriginal tribe? It's really cool. And it's, I don't want to say anymore because you should just get it and you should read it. And so, um, huh? I said I should. I, I want to read, now that we're talking about this, like I read a lot of stuff on like different stages of babies, but you know, I, I don't think I've read anything on different stages of kids. children. Yeah. Yeah. And like what happens because it is a total shift when they get to the teenage years, there is like, I'm experiencing that now, you know, and it's mm -hmm. cool because we can have such cool conversations and they are teaching me intentionally as well too, which is, so we're co-creating with each other. Um, so one of the things that they say in that book is they don't, the Aborigines, at least in this tribe, don't celebrate birthdays. They celebrate growth. 
So every year for each person in the tribe, that person will be like, you know, I've, re I've reached a growth milestone in myself, inside of myself. I have grown as a human being somehow in some ways inside of myself. And I can tell, like I can tell that I've reached this. And so, because they're like eight, birthdays just happen. Like everybody's, everybody's yeah. like, yeah, you didn't do anything to get there. Yeah. Like, why are you celebrating, right? And I think that's such a beautiful thing to think about because it's like somebody can be 35 and on the inside be acting like they're three. You know what I mean? So it's like, well, just because you had some more years going on doesn't mean that you did the work to progress and to grow into that age or whatever it is, which I think is so, I think that's such a cool thing. That is, that is. I like that. I, you'll have to give me the name of that book. Okay. Now that I have free time. I mean, not really, but. <laughs> this is one of those books that you can read. It's really fast. Eva literally read it yesterday, literally yesterday oh, cool. and not, and it was a few hours that she read it. Um, and she was Eva probably has better reading strategies than I do right now. <laughs> it's higher reading level. It is hard as like, it's hard as a mom. This is why I made my children take naps every day and then go to bed early every day. And they could not leave their rooms until 7 a.m. This is why, this is why, because I needed my space. Yes. I, yeah. I needed to also be an adult as well as just a mom. Just a mom. Yeah. And you need your space in the morning too, when you want to go jogging. Yes. Legit. Because literally, how are you supposed to stay sane when you can't do that? This is what, this is what we know. Like we know so many deep truths. We really, really, really do because we've lived it. We've like, we've lived being in human growth. You know what I mean? Like we've lived that, which is, we've, we've lived relationships with each other so much and we've seen what, it, what, what's needed. And, and that's one of the things, one of the things that is really, really, really needed in that is space, personal space, mm -hmm. time to process through all of the things because otherwise we go bananas, like bananas. I know. And I feel, I feel for everyone, you know, my friend Megan and I were talking cause she lived in Milan while you like, you know, a couple years ago, we drove down to Milan to see them. And she's like, everybody in Italy, you know, like their apartments are so small and you're locked down to your house. That's like, everybody's on the balcony. And she's like, I just feel for them. And I'm like, I can't even imagine, you know, at least, I mean, for me, I mean, of course, people in Hawaii, too, live in apartments. And, you know, people in other areas, like, you know, they, they live in, you know, condos and stuff like that. But a lot of people here have a house with a yard. Okay. People take a walk. You know, it's easier to social, to just have my own space and get out, get some fresh air. Yeah. But if you live in the city... You definitely need that time of alone time out in outside of your confined space. Yeah. Part of that too is that again, this is like a leadership skill of like we get stuck and what our physical bodies do impacts our spiritual and mental and emotional stuff. And it's the same, the opposite way too. What our spiritual stuff is doing impacts our physical stuff as well. It's great. It's like this awesome symbiosis. And so if we're like, if we're literally physically stuck in one little spot, then we spiritually and emotionally and mentally can get stuck in one spot as well. And so it, it, it's literally like a leadership skill of like, get up and move your body from place to place yeah. so that you can find the, the possibility. Oh, yeah. I totally believe that. Yeah. Even if it's like in your living room, like move from place to place. And there is, I mean, like there's something magical. Well, yes, of course there's something magical and wonderful about mama earth because she helps take care of us. Like it's a great place to drain out all of those emotions. She's so good at, you know, it is. Yeah, she is. All right, I'm gonna let you go. Is he asleep? Yeah, he's 